what's good y'all it's your boy ross back at again with another video and man oh man do we gotta talk about what happened on this episode of friday night smackdown man shout out to everyone that was part of the live stream on youtube and twitch we had a good time tonight this was a pretty good show um we gotta talk about uh the new smackdown tag team championships that was uh uh revealed tonight by triple h and um nick aldis and not gonna lie to you those new smackdown tag team championships look fantastic they remind me of the the um the old smackdown uh tag team championships from like the the ray mysterio era of smackdown and the, when paul I want to say, was it Paul London and Brian Kendrick were tag team champs? You guys remember that that style of the uh, SmackDown tag team championships? It reminded me of that, except there's no blue. It's just all gold. Looks beautiful. Love the SmackDown tag team titles, man. They really did their thing uh, when it came to designing those belts. They look fantastic. I honestly like them better than the, the Raw SmackDown titles, but... Both sets are better than the quarter belts we've been dealing with for so many years. So that was really, really good. But we got to talk about what everyone's talking about right now. And that's this bloodline situation. So following off of what happened with Jimmy last week and, and we're, you know, we're seeing uh, Tama Tonga um, being introduced into the bloodline faction. We started off this week. Uh, a van pulls up black band suv pulls up and then solo hops out he meets paul Heyman in the back solo hops out and suited and booted he has a black suit on with a shirt got a nice little chain on still got his thumb wrap you know he's suited and booted you know dressed to impress like like he's the tribal chief like he's the running things around he even paul Heyman, nice nice threads like you know what's going on like you looking looking nice out here man and then all of a so sudden uh tamatunga pulls up and he was like yo i want to introduce you the newest member to the bloodline and you see tamatunga he's put up the ones he's very intense he doesn't say anything and then he asked paul Heyman, hey paul have you seen kevin owens is kevin owens here and paul's like yeah he he should be there like you know, he, he he should be here. He's probably in the, the locker room or whatnot. And I'm guessing they're talking about the locker room that we, that used to be the bloodlines. So he's like, take me to him. So that segment ends. We don't know what's happening there. We cut to another segment later on the show. They're in Gorilla. And Paul Heyman's basically telling Solo, like, yeah, you know, I, I, I you're going to be tribal chief one day, but you're making moves that you can't you shouldn't be making and he's basically talking about adding uh tomatonga into the bloodline you know and and trying to do things uh taking out jimmy last week like you're doing things that you know you, you, not yet you're not the you're not the tribal and then he tells him are you done are you done talking are you done with this okay like relax so let's go out here so they go out there and Paul Heyman cuts his promo and whatnot, and he's talking about what's going on, the backstage politicking and all this other stuff. He's just, you know, trying to let the crowd know what's going on with the bloodline. And at one point, you hear, we want Roman chant. We, they loud, just, we want Roman. And Solo's, like, annoyed by that, like, scoffing at it. It's going to be very interesting to see we may end up getting a face Roman when we when we when he comes back because he's gonna get a huge pop whenever he does come back. But that was cool to see that we got a we want Roman chant, and then Paul Heyman is essentially about to say, you know what, you know this is all great and all, but you know you aren't our tribal. You know, what I'm saying he's about to mention the tribal chief, and that's when Solo took the mic took the microphone away from him. And this is when he started getting Dominic level of booze. They were booing him every time he picked up the microphone. Every single time they're booing him viciously, which is very interesting to see, very great to see him getting that type of reaction. Every time he speaks, they 
didn't want to hear it. He said, what I, I had to do to my brother was unfortunate. I love my brother. You know what I'm saying? I, I love him. I didn't want to have to do that to him, but things had to be done. You know, I have a new brother now. And he's talking about Tomatonga. And then they cut to the ramp. And then you see Kevin Owens get thrown from the back. And he's bloody. A crimson mask, which was so shocking to see. After Solo said, I have a new brother now. You see Kevin Owens bloodied up. And you see Tomatonga standing over him, putting up the one. And I'm like, yo, what the hell happened? What's going on? Dude is a crimson mask. So much blood leaking. They had to get security out there to separate, you know, separate them. You know what I'm saying? He, they're trying to sort things out. And Tomatonga gets in the ring. He puts up the one with Solo. Paul Heyman's shocked and appalled. They're taking Kevin Owens in the back. And Kevin Owens being such of a dog that he is, he comes back out there, he's stumbling, bloodied face and all, and start, he gets Tomatonga uh, by the feet under the ropes, start giving him the beats, but then Solo he gets in there and jumps him, throw him, throws him into the steel steps, then they gets into the ring, there's a lot of JAG security, and then he's just fighting everybody, doesn't matter. The ultimately, the numbers game gets the best of him, and uh, Solo ends up hitting a KO, a bloody KO with the Samoan spike, puts him down. Then Tomatonga goes out the ring, and he's not done. You know, they start even fighting security at one point, but he gets a steel chair. He gets a steel chair, and he's about to try to murder him even more, but that's when Nick all this steps in and said no we're not doing this put down the chair and solo had to convince tomatonga to put down the chair because even though nick aldis was telling him to put it down he didn't want to crazy segment solo looking at blood on his hand he's admiring it they put up the one at the top of the ramp uh solo and tomatonga and paul Heyman is shook he doesn't know what's going on this was fantastic we cut to a, a scene in the back where Nick Aldis is walking up to Paul Heyman. And Paul Heyman's like, did you know about this? And he's like, wait, what are you talking about? And as you see in the distance, there's two cars. One car is rammed into the other. Essentially, Tomatonga tried to kill KO in the back. He tried to kill him in the car. He tried to run him over. He basically pulled a Rikishi. <laughs> what Rikishi did to Stone Cold so many years ago. For the rock. I did it for the rock. Well, Tomatonga did it for solo and tried to legit kill him in the parking lot. And Nick Aldis was like, that's Kevin Owens' vehicle. We can't have this savagery on our show. So you need to get things in order. The draft is coming up. And there are some there are things worse than losing. Get your guys in order, or there's gonna be a problem. And somebody in the chat. Y'all said something very interesting, and I like that. And I want to expound on this before I get into this, just the breakdown of this whole situation and where it could go. Someone said, what if Nick Aldis ends up getting attacked by Tomatonga? What if it gets, during this draft process, they try to take out some more people, it's chaos, Nick Aldis steps in the way again, and he gets hit by Tomatonga or something like that. I think that's going to be very interesting because now you're creating this story that Solo and especially Tomatonga cannot be controlled. He is a vicious monster. Now, he was barking. <laughs> he was damn near barking in the ring, Tomatonga, after what he had did. He's a vicious monster. While Kevin Owens was bleeding before the, the security get a hold of things, he's beating them up even more. This was great. This was fantastic. And this all spurred from the fact that KO last week on SmackDown, while, while he, they were now in Cody Rhodes' locker and they were trying to go into Cody Rhodes' locker, KO told them, you guys are not invited in here anymore and closed the door on them. That's how this started. And Solo said, we're not doing this. I love it. So if they if Tomatonga ends up attacking the GM and Triple H got to, has to get involved. Now we're in something for something. We're this could be good. 
And the real question still, and Solo hasn't said it, he has not actively announced that he considers himself the tribal chief. He hasn't. And that leads me to believe is The Rock behind this? Because we know Roman's not behind this. Is The Rock still behind this? Because if we get more officials getting involved, like Nick Aldis maybe getting attacked, then Triple H has to step up. That could be some type of tie-in potentially to The Rock and Triple H still that power struggle. So I don't know. But we have not heard him say he is the tribal chief yet. He's giving off vibes like he feels like he is with the dressing up and, you know, having Tama, Tonga do his bidding. But we haven't seen that. So maybe The Rock is still pulling streams behind the scenes. I love this. This was great. They are cooking with the bloodline. This segment was so good. And it, it got intense because you see a bloody KO. When's the last time you've seen blood like this outside of, of what The Rock did to Cody going into WrestleMania, which was fucking fantastic? When have you seen something like this where KO is bleeding profusely and has been destroyed on Fox, on SmackDown? This was great. This was great. I don't even think Roman has packed up anyone like this to the point where they're just spewing out blood this is savagery and i love what they're doing here we're definitely getting some type of bloodline warfare very very soon i do think jimmy and jay they're gonna align themselves with each other this is a good chapter a good new chapter into the bloodline saga and i'm loving it because it's making you care about solo and now it's making you care about Tama Tonga for those who don't know who he is outside of WWE and is giving you that sense of this dude is unhinged this is insanity he's trying to kill people I'm here for it this is great this is this is how you capitalize after a great Wrestlemania you keep stories going you keep things progressing I'm all for it comment down below let me know did you and God uh, did you guys enjoy this episode of SmackDown. And what do y'all think is going to happen with this Bloodline stuff? Because right now, they are knocking it out the park. I can't wait to see what's going to happen on next week's SmackDown. This is fantastic. But I appreciate all the love and support. Road to 50 k And I'm still your undisputed YouTube wrestling champion of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.